out here for you. You don't know what it's like to be me out here for you. We choose truth over facts. Never go for retard. Come on, man. Hey, tell me how we got. It is Kaz from In The Trenches with Kaz, and I'm here today to say g'day to you if you're here for the first time. Hola, comma, stars. And I'm here to just let you know that this is a video, an information video, a transparency, drag the curtain aside, look what's behind it, Wizard of Oz video. To let you know that if you're going to join the ADF, the Australian Defence Force, whether it be Army, Air Force, Navy, should be exactly the same test for all of them. They need to make a modification, and that is to have a diving platform installed at Kapuka and equivalent for Navy and Air Force. Why? We're going to cover that in this video. For more than 30 years, I joined in 1991. We still had the same swim test, and we're going to have this in a moment. And you're going to see that it doesn't meet the standards of a hypothetical scenario that would be realistic to save your life, the life of others, or potentially even civilians, should you be the first responder that is a, an application of our job description to assist when we're off duty, which is really never. So guys and girls, the question is, can you swim? Can you? If so, how well, how far? Can you swim with boots on? Can you swim with clothes on? I think you're a weirdo if you knew, unless it was a 21st frat party freako thing where you swam across a river for a bet. Swimming is a phobia and it should be taken seriously. It should be identified and we don't seem to do it. When you go for your U session, okay, what seems to occur is and assessment session and PFA pre-enlistment fitness assessment. We see what your academic capability is, your IQ score. We see what your IB, uh, BMI is. The higher it is, probably the better you're going to float. I get it. We see what you are like psychologically. We see what you are like medically. Is there any surprises? We see what you are like cardio, push-ups, muscular endurance, hip flexors, sit-ups. But do they actually ask you, can you swim? And if so, how far? How competent? Because that's a big deal. We should never assume being girt by sea that everyone that turns up is not as scared of a bath as what the British are. So we're going to cover that today. What I'd like you to do right now in comments down below, pause, is put what you believe the swim test probably is for the Australian Army, Air Force and Navy, considering this is not a school this is a professional skill at arms where we go and face threats, both natural and man-made abroad on operations or on exchanges or even domestically, talisman saber, to name one but many. There is tools that we use that the swim test will not prepare you for. Swim uh, sessions in the pool are a common occurrence, especially in the warmer climate locations like Townsville, Darwin, etc., Brisbane. And the reason why that happens is because it is an alternative to um, hard PT that is done. It's a recovery session. It might be after field. It could be to do with preparing you for exchange with the USMC in Hawaii, Kenioe Bay. It could be in the Hewitt facility, helicopter underwater escape training facility that is at these locations. It could be because you want to go to the 2nd Battalion amphibious group. Two RAR amphibious are the commander's eyes and ears on the battlefield. We arrive under the cover of darkness, seeking out the enemy. It could be because you want to go commandos or SASR. Don't wait for us to train you. Turn up prepared, turn up physical, turn up capable, so that survivability, maneuverability, lethality, because at the end of the day, we need to make it to the battlefield and make it back again, again, domestically or abroad. 
Swimming is one of those things where you can be as dangerous to those that you call comrade as what the enemy are if you panic. <laughs> Because the only thing you're going to care about is your next breath. All of the testing we do, although it's in uniform, it has its boots off. Now, that doesn't make sense. Because you're never going to be in a position where you have your boots off when a catastrophe, a calamity occurs on a rotary wing uh, aircraft, helicopter, or on a naval boat, or in a amphibious assault vehicle, amphibious armoured vehicle, Amtrak, whatever you want to call it, has only one hatch of escape for up to 14 people that sit in the back with all of their equipment, weapons and sharp edge objects added in. Guys and girls, what do you think the test should be? Because I'll tell you in a moment, and I guarantee you'd agree. Why don't we do that? And that would probably be because we don't want to lose people. We want to keep the books cooked. Don't listen to him. So that we keep the right amount of quota, the right amount of people in, and we don't lose. John West rejects those that have no gills. No further ado, let's get to it. Let's check out the test right now. We'll, We'll start with the army test. It won't take long. During your military training, you'll be asked to take a short swim test to make sure you're confident in the water. You'll need to try and swim 30 metres using any stroke you like and tread water for two minutes, both while fully clothed. It can look tough if you're not comfortable around water, but all you need to do is have a go. So get prepared to try try practicing the test at your local pool. So when the time comes, you're ready to jump in and give it your all. So don't scare people away. The Navy swim test. Start on the platform. Place your feet together. Hold one arm up and pinch your nose with a pistol grip. Place your other arm across your bicep. Look forward, not down, while stepping off the platform with one leg. Bring your feet together as you pin drop into the water. She goes all the way to the bottom. This exercise will be part of your test to enter the Navy and it will be performed in uniform. To prepare for this test, it is recommended to do this exercise in full clothing without shoes. Start in the water, holding onto the side. Push off the wall, staying underwater by utilising any swim method. Do not surface until you have reached the 10 metre mark. This exercise will be part of your test to enter the Navy, and it will be performed in uniform. To prepare for this test, it is recommended to do this exercise in full clothing without shoes. Move your arms and feet to keep your head above water. This exercise will be part of your test to enter the Navy, and it will be performed in uniform. To prepare for this test, it is recommended to do this exercise in full clothing without shoes. Utilise any of the following strokes to swim 50 metres. Back skull or side Turn stroke. Turn around, face where you're going. For back skull and side stroke, keep your arms underwater. This exercise will be part of your test to enter the Navy and it will be performed in uniform. To prepare for this test, it is recommended to do this exercise in full clothing without shoes. So... Team, what I took out of that is they want you to go and practice, practice this at your local pool. Are you going to go and turn up in your normal clobber, go and jump into a civilian pool, fully clothed with no shoes on? They're going to think you're either there to wash your clothes off pay week, or they're going to think you're a goddamn weirdo and call the cops. You can go to a pool and say, hey, mate, can I get the lifeguard just to watch for a second? I'm going for the military. I need to come down here and do a quick test in full clothing, wearing winter clothes in summer in the pool. With no shoes on doesn't make sense either. Safety swimming styles, you need to only be going either side stroke or breaststroke until you're in one location treading water because you still need to be able to take information in. 
You still need to be able to see where you're going. You need to be able to see other hazards. You need to be able to hear people communicating and asking you for help if they're injured. This test will not prepare you. Now, what I recommend instead, because you don't come with whinges unless you've got solutions. So what I believe in a hypothetical situation, let's assume you're in a rotary ring, a rotary wing helicopter, aircraft, or you're in a vessel or an AAV, okay, amphibious assault vehicle. Yeah, what needs to occur is, we'll take it from the ship's perspective, because you'll already see what we're about to show now with the amphibious vehicle and the, and the dangers of that. Okay, but you're also going to see Hewitt, helicopter underwater escape training, the dangers of that with a flailing individual that's panicking, killing everyone else behind them. But let's also talk from the perspective of someone that is on a vessel that is beginning to sink because of one thing or another. What I believe the test should be, they need to build platforms, again, in Kapuka, and equivalent for Air Force and Navy, that should be at least five metres high. From there, what it should be is as a group. We don't do things individually. You should go as a group of five and jump at the same time. Hit the water, okay, with boots on. And then from there, without coming up and breaking the surface, swim 10 metres forward where there'll be a line on the bottom of the pool. We're doing things for real here. Preparing for the worst day. And then you break the surface. And that is to simulate getting under any POL, which may be on fire, petrol, oils, or lubricants. So you get above that. And then from there, what you need to do is get your breath back. Tread water, relax, get calm. The water's probably goddamn freezing. There's probably some sundials getting around. That means sharks. Okay, and then from there, what you need to do is learn how to take your boots off calmly. Let one go. Take the second one off after rest, boom, all of a sudden you're lying. It's not trying to pull you down to where the octopus's garden is. You're assisting your buddies as well. And that's including reassuring or pushing them away. If they're panicking, you don't help. So if they're panicking, you let them drown if you have to. And then from there, what you need to be able to do is tread water for 15 minutes, which includes letting the boots go. Once that's complete, make your way to the other end of the pool. Next team, prepare to go, go. That would be a perfect test. And it should be done by Air Force, Army, and Navy. And it should be capable, tick, yes. Not yet capable, competent. Go to psychologist or go to the PDIs for extra training. <laughs> but that should be done at Kapuka. Not, and you should not be allowed out of Kapuka. You should not be allowed out of uh, equivalent to uh, Air Force or Navy either until that is complete. This is about saving lives. This is about capability, maneuverability, survivability, lethality. It's about getting home safely. Team, here's some people that didn't work out for that probably were very capable. It doesn't matter what you did to prepare, accidents occur, both on operations and at home. Here's a couple. Bam. To Mr. Paul Lincoln. Mate, rest in peace. You look fit. Your tan is fantastic. I'm sure you would have been a fantastic guy. All the best to you and your lovely family. Okay, here, Special Forces. Best of the best. Green Beret dies during water training at Fort Campbell. So it can happen to any one team. Another one. This one, catastrophic. California. AAV. Amphibious assault vehicle. Bam. Nine dead. There's one hatch to get out. What happened? Did someone panic? Did someone's boots and arms go to every direction of the compass and prevented anyone behind them from getting out? Don't know. Maybe there was no fault whatsoever. Maybe it was unavoidable. You can do your own research on that one, but it happens. It's catastrophic. Guys and gals, in conclusion, learn to swim. The Army's job is not to teach you to swim. You are supposed to turn up prepared, and that's what means being ready is about. An implied task, turn up, good to go. Work on your weaknesses, not just your strengths. And if you're a civilian and watching this and you're never going to be military, you owe it to yourself to learn how to swim. Not only so you can save children, not only so you can save others, not only so you don't have to be saved, but so you can have a goddamn great life. <laughs> Swimming. Never assume, because we're girt by sea, that everyone can do it. 
beware of the panicker. I'll take you down every time. I'm here to get you wet, real wet.